Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about mastitis and commonly as vets it's something that we get asked about every year um, in sheep flocks that are lambing down. Um, some flocks, many flocks are affected, Some generally we get around 2% of cases of mastitis in flocks but that can be a lot higher um, and some flocks can have problems up to 10%. Um, so it, it's certainly a problem. Um, especially because we get ewes that get sick with mastitis, we get the knock-on effects that affects the milk production, which in turn will affect the survival of the lambs and the growth of their lambs. And then also we then get issues with, with the udders um, in terms of loss of milk production, which is almost always um, irreversible. And those ewes then need to leave the flock as culls. So it's a significant issue. Um, we, we, get, we get two types of mastitis. We can get acute cases of mastitis where it comes on very suddenly um, and we notice that around lambing time. Um, we'll get the, the ewe can be clinically ill, she can be sick, she'll be down with her ears down. Um, she, uh, the udder the may be very hot, usually starts off quite hot and hard um, and swollen and then as, as that progresses, depending on what what's causing the mastitis, we might then get quite a cold, gangrenous bag. Um, we can see that around lambing time, we can see it shortly after um, when they've been turned out into the field and quite often you'll pick up on that uh, as, as being a sick ewe um, or out in the field, you know, a stiff gait, she might appear lame, she might not come up to feed when you feed them and you'll just notice that something's wrong. You might notice it in her lambs that they're stood all hunched up. Um, and that would be quite acute mastitis. When you strip that udder, you'll see the milk will have changed in colour and it will be um, thinner and it will uh, be a different colour, like a red-brown discharge sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, it can be quite obvious. And then we do see chronic mastitis where that's, we tend to notice that towards the end of lambing um, and we might not even pick it up until we're actually checking them um, after weaning and we will see um, lumps, hard lumps in the bag um, of, which is a result of scar tissue. Sometimes it can be abscesses in there depending on the cause of the mastitis. Um, treating those cases um, is usually very unsuccessful. That, that tissue damage and that scar tissue remains in the udder and the milk production of those mammary cells around that scar tissue and within it is affected and so those ewes really need to be culled out of the flock. Um, so it can be quite a significant issue. There's a few risk factors for mastitis and if you are having a problem, it's, we certainly advise that you speak to your vet and go through the different factors that might be occurring and keep a record of when you're getting the mastitis, what it looks like um, and how many cases you're getting and that can help us pinpoint where to start looking. Um, but very generally, so mastitis is caused by a bacteria. There's a few different types of bacteria. Some of them live on the on the skin, on the udder, so they're always present. And when there's a when there's a breakdown in the skin barrier or in the teat canal, those bacteria can can get into the teat canal and into the udder and cause disease. Some bacteria will live in the tonsils of the lambs and they can be passed um, during sucking um, when they're actually taking milk. So that's another way of transferring. Flies can transfer um, the bacterial causes of mastitis, which we could, might see later on in the summer as they've been turned out. Um, so those are the main causes of bacteria and the main sources and the environment will contribute to um, a bacterial load, which if it's quite high, quite high challenge, that can also cause a mastitis in the ewe. So hygiene, as always, is very important. So in the shed, they need ample space, or the required space when they're in the lambing pens. It needs to be clean and dry, and we need to just have a look at that and look at the, check that we haven't got any um, wet areas in the shed or any leaking water troughs, um, anything that might contribute to that bedding getting wet. And the stocking density. If we've got high stocking densities, we're gonna have higher loads of contamination, be it fecal, um, or be it, or, or be it um, you know, from an increased wet bedding. So stocking density is important. The dryness of the bed at the udder level when they're sat down is important. And if there's any leakages in the sheds, really important as well. Um, when that's all been checked, we then need to consider um, milk supply. Um, we, we see mastitis when we have um, um, issues with milk supply. 
So we might see things um, like lambs are hungry if they're repeatedly sucking um, or um, if they're not doing well, if they succumb to disease, um, for example, if they get watery mouth, things like that that have affected um, um, the colostrum, we may, that may be a cause of um, knock-on effect of mastitis. So um, if, they do, if the ewes don't have enough milk, very often that can lead to mastitis because the, the lambs revisit the teat more often because they're not getting full, they're not getting the required amount. We also see it when we get cold weather, um, wet weather, anything that increases the demand for energy and protein from those lambs so they need more milk, they revisit the udder more often, that in turn can cause damage and then that can lead to mastitis. Um, as can any other damage on the teeth, such as ORF, if we get ORF lesions that can also lead to mastitis as well because we're getting a breakdown in the skin barrier. So making sure that we've got clean hygienic um, conditions in the shed, making sure that we are happy that the ewes are producing enough milk. So that will lead back to checking the diet. Essentially, forage analysis. We need to know what the forage is supplying and then, then you can match there's any supplementary feed to that to make sure that you're supplying that ewe with enough crucial protein in that last three to four weeks to make sure that she's going to be um, getting, her, um, getting her milk supply correct. Um, and then taking, taking a step back, we need to look at for the following year what her body condition's like. Use that lamb down in, in optimum body condition at lambing time will have the reserves to meet those, um, those demand uh, requirements for milk. When the diet doesn't quite match that, those ewes will be less likely to get mastitis if it's caused by a milk production issue. So there's a few things that we can look at there. Um, certainly speak to your vet if you're having any um, issues. Record when you're getting them and how long after lambing and so on um, and, and keep a number of that and then look at the critical risk factors in the shed or in the ewes um, or in the diet to look at where we might need to start improving um, to prevent mastitis.